This time on the show, we debut the USB rubber ducky, replacing Unity with GNOME, x86 routers, and more, this time on Hack5. This segment of Hack5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. This is your weekly dose of Technolust. That's right, it is. Oh Darn tootin. Oh, it's one of those episodes again. <laughs> I'm sorry I had candy again. Oh. It hey. happens. We have a fantastic show for you guys this week. It's a show that's probably been in development for a couple of years, actually. Oh, but that's uh, first right. and foremost, we got an email, as we do sometimes. And this one came sometimes. from. <laughs> sometimes. I don't know. Check port 110, see what happens. Uh, we got an email from Raquel at Revision 3. She's a producer, and she writes Hey, all, here's the official tally. Congrats to Hack 5. Well done, Darren and team. Ben will officially wear the Virginia's for Lovers t shirt on his latest episode. <laughs> and then we have the, uh, what is it? Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, here we go. The stats. There were a total of 35,133 votes. Wow. For the, of course, we're talking about the, okay. um, the Hello Kitty backpack. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, oh, look at that. Hack5 got 87% of the 35,000 votes. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So Way to, to go, Hack5. I know that sometimes Ben can get a little confused when it comes to math and measurements, full, micro. It all kind of gets confusing. So what I've done here, Ben, is I've, I've, I've laid this out. And this is to just kind of like give you an example of how the voting went. This is 100 pens. And imagine these are the percentage of votes, right? <laughs> these over here, those are, those are our votes. And the, these over here, these would be your votes. So, <laughs> since I'm such a so nice mean. guy, though, <laughs> since, since Ben didn't have the awesome pen right. that we got with our case mod, I figured that, that we'd be nice and send him not just the 13 pens. <laughs> There's your pen, Ben. Oh. There's your pen. You're, you're going to send him go. the Hello Kitty pen? But yeah. I don't. Okay, fine. Yeah. I get, if it's for a good cause. It is. It is. For rating our... Uh, <laughs> our our fellow shows on Revision 3. That's always good fun and uh, <laughs> for a good cause. It's all him. I had nothing <laughs> to do with that. I didn't even know what he was saying before we decided sure. to record this. Just needed all the office pens. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, so you're, you're switched over to GNOME? What's going on yes, with that? Yes, I have switched over to GNOME. I've done the docky thing. It's totally cool. And I'm going to tell you all about how to do it really, really easily in uh, my segment later on today. Wahoo, the convert. Look at that. Actually, I've, I'm converted as well. I'm not I'm on my backtrack. Huh? I'm not on my backtrack box. I'm on this EPC while my other machine gets fixed. Yeah, because fixed. yours broke. Yeah. I, you I, stepped on it. Or Kirby stepped on it. I don't know. Oh, could have been Kirby. It could have been. Mm -hmm. But she won't own up to it now. I don't know. But I'm on an EPC temporarily, so I'm back to Ubuntu. And it's OK. You're know, accident prone. I know things happen. <laughs> Guess what? What? The duck is here! Yay! <laughs> I know, right? Um, wow, it has been just so long uh, coming, really. And I'm so happy to finally be debuting this Oops. because it's really a project that uh, kind of, I don't know, it's the evolution of the Switchblade that came out in 06. So really we're talking about like five years evolution yeah, here. Yeah, it's, it's been a long time. The concept in 08 and the prototype boards and then shipping them out and then developing You stuck a USB in his stuff butt. And, well, yeah. <laughs> anyway, <Okay>. in typical <laughs> Hack 5 fashion though, we figured that we would explain all the fun new awesome stuff about this custom developed rubber duck hid attack quackity quack by uh, doing it right and uh, doing okay. it with a cartoon. So without further ado, it's ducky time. If there's one thing about computers that's always interested me, it's how the deeper you get, the more secure things are. The four-way handshakes of WPA, signing with OpenPGP, authentication protocols like Kerberos and other highly complex schemes keep data tight. And yet studies have shown that if you give the right person a chocolate bar, they'll give you a password. It seems that the computer-to-computer -computer network stuff is actually highly scrutinized, but contrast that with the fundamentals. The basic input and output of your local computer comes with, and honestly has since the beginning of computing, implicit trust. 
the human trusts the display to be the computer and the computer trusts the keyboard to be the human. But what if the keyboard wasn't human? Not to say we're somehow flawed, I mean 100 words per minute is pretty good, but a computer surely could type faster and more accurately. I mean, if a computer could sit at a keyboard and type. Yeah. What's interesting in this scenario is that the inherent trust is broken on such a fundamental I.O. level that any presumption of computer security based on the concept that a human could never type as fast as the bus supports, think fast enough to generate brute force dictionaries, or be so persistent as to never need a coffee, a nap, or a pee break are ultimately flawed. It's these kinds of violations of inherent trust that fascinate me, mostly because they take advantage of often overlooked mainstays of computing implemented for user friendliness, like auto run code on CD-ROM drives, the Hack5 community misused the trust Windows has in autorun.inf files on the root of optical media back in 2006 with a tool we dubbed the USB switchblade. Named after the U3-enabled SanDisk cruiser that made the attack so convenient on a single USB drive, the tool was so popular as to have garnered a community of payload developers. It was so popular, in fact, that it and the USB hacksaw took up a significant portion of the Singer's published book titled The Seven Deadliest USB Attacks. Well, now it's time to introduce the eighth. Following up with the USB switchblade, I became fascinated with human interface devices, and by 2009 was playing with Arduino-like development boards. Before heading out on the Hack Across America trip in 2010, I introduced the concept and kickstarted the crowdsourced development by shipping 100 Teensy kits to interested developers around the world for free. The response was overwhelming. The things you can get a programmable human interface to do are absolutely astounding. Since then, we've been working on something I guess you could say a little more turnkey. Something that didn't require a development environment, C programming, or firmware modification. A device as easy to customize as the USB switchblade, and even more deadly. With the help of Applied Security, a man by the name of Adam, and our guy Jason Applebaum, I seriously can't thank these people enough, that solution is finally here. Introducing the USB Rubber Ducky 1.0. Continuing with the original concept of developing the script files and loading payloads by micro SD media, a penetration tester is able to carry multiple payloads on one USB rubber ducky. Additionally, the board has been fitted with a standard Type A USB plug, a 7 pin JTAG interface, which can alternatively be used for I.O., and more importantly, a whopping 60 megahertz 32 bit Atmel chip. Yeah. Proudly made in the USA, these boards are banging to say the least. And what's more, the scripting language has me developing some pretty wicked payloads. Let's run through the first one. This one's great for when your mate's distracted for a few seconds. Upon plugging the USB rubber ducky into a Windows 7 OS, it'll automatically install the generic drivers necessary to accept keystrokes. No intervention necessary. The duck deploys its payload in a matter of seconds, starting with a couple of key combos, like the Windows key and D to show the desktop then print screen to take a screenshot. The duck then hits the menu key followed by V and D to disable the desktop icons, then Windows R to pull up the run line and open MS Paint. Paste the picture of the desktop with the icon still there, Control S to save the file, and then Alt K and then F to set it as the background. Alt F4 closes Paint, and then finally the Windows key D will show the desktop again. Now you can sit back and watch as your coworker furiously double clicks on icons that aren't there. Oh yes. Of course, the USB rubber ducky isn't just for pranks. A more crafty payload will actually inject executables for a little uh, remote administration. This payload, for example, fires up a Windows 7 command prompt, bypassing the user access control and creating a few crafty files. It begins by writing a Visual Basic script, executable on all Windows machines, that converts Base64 encoded ASCII into binary. Follow that up with a 1.2 kilobyte payload written out into an ASCII file and then converted to binary with the first. Run it with a host name and a port number and you've got yourself a little reverse shell running with system privileges. Props go to Illwill on the Hack5 forums for that little gem. The beautiful thing about these types of attack is that the host isn't actually doing anything they wouldn't normally be allowed to do, they're just doing it at a much faster pace. You may not have an hour to fiddle with a free computer at a client site, but if you can be discreet for 10 seconds, that may be all you need. What's more, things like local brute force attacks are finally possible. Load up a word list on a micro SD card and then go to town, or soon we'll be using the onboard CPU to generate passwords on the fly. And with a sane scripting language that anyone can write for in any text editor like Notepad, you can see why we're really proud of this little quacker. Of course, this is only the beginning and we have big plans and of course are interested in your feedback. The first USB rubber duckies are in the hack shop and you can email us at feedback at hack5.org. 
We've put together a forum for scripting development, and we think you're going to love what we have in store for the future of exploiting the inherent trust of local I.O. I'm really interested in seeing what kind of crafty payloads you can come up with. And if one thing's for damn sure, this makes hack time so much fun. Now, it needs to be something more like straightforward, like usbrubberducky.com. No, no, it should be more hardcore, like, like tacticalassaultducks.com. I'm leaning towards programmablehumaninterfacedevice.com. No, no way. absolutely not. Is that you typing? Kirby! Kirby! Meow! No matter what your project is, Domain.com has what you need to register, host, and promote your next big idea. Even if it's fgghuh.com. Domain.com is owning the competition with cheap domain names and hassle-free service. Their easy checkout process and domain discovery system make it easy to select the domain that's right for you and set up your website without hassle. Domain.com will even transfer your domain name from another registrar and hook you up with an extra year for free for a mere, well, it's actually less than six fifty when you use the coupon code HAK5 at checkout. That's right, our coupon code HAK5 will save you 15%. Don't forget, when you think domain names, think domain.com. Indicted, alleged lawsuit member, Kret Singer, on impairment of protected computers and conspiracy, charged by a Fed grand jury in a tax and information theft from Sony, petitioned to stop issuing software patents on WhiteHouse.gov, cause trolling is rampant, over 5,000 people signed it, so we'll see an official response from the government. Google Chrome hits 14, enhanced reliance scroll bar and full screen, support for mixing audio in 3D, native client framework for apps from third parties, the FCC publishes rules for net neutrality, providers must show transparency and can't block lawful traffic legally, whether hardline or mobily. I know I made the last word up, it's called poetic license man, look it up. One time for your mind. I'm Del Chase, those are your hacker headlines. Like that, y'all. Like that, y'all. Like that, y'all.